Okay. Okay. Hi everybody, it's Dr. Christine Sauer and Maxine Silva and we are doing our first Sunday Sofa Chat which is a video series where we will talk about real things related to matters that move us at the time. And I know Maxine, for you right now, at your stage of life, we are both no longer little kids. It's peace. Speak for yourself. I do. <laughs> <laughs> My mother said, I quote her, she's 89, God love her. She says, you're not getting old until you hit 85. So we both have a long time to go. Yeah, well, my, I have a, a, a little less than you, but we're not telling. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not telling. Two things you never ask a woman. What are What's they? That? I don't know. Her. her age and her weight, Christine. Oh, I don't Two care. No nos. <laughs> I, I give away both. How do you? <laughs> Number well, one, the weight you see. Yeah. Number two, the age you guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't necessarily don't see, it. see it. Well, so, we try not to see it. Then we have the other issue that I care about most, which is health and helping right. other people. That's right. Most importantly. No, they are both important. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Most yeah. importantly, those two. Mm. Regardless of the other stuff is what I'm talking about. And we are talking about how peace leads to health and helps people. Yes. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's proven scientifically also. That so what do you impact. think about it, how that works together? Yeah. How, yeah. What do you think? Well... Uh, Just curious. Uh, you know what? To find peace in your life is always a challenge because we are bombarded every day with media and social uh, media and uh, all kinds of negative uh, activities going on in the world and it can't help but make you feel suppressed puts you down all the time and it's like oh my god not another one I I didn't have a television for six years I swore off it a good thing and sometimes. I said because that's all I was getting was negative message uh, messages all the time and then you know after a while I sort of thought I wonder what's going on Oh, <laughs> I think we have to consciously restrict the amount we watch. I have clients that are anxious. I ask them, what do you do all day? I watch the news. I want to know what's going on. How does it make mm. you feel? Oh, I feel sorry for them. It's terrible what's going on in the world, isn't yeah. it? And I said, yes, it is terrible. But can you do something about it? No, we can't. Most mm. of the time we can't. Yeah. The only person we have influence over in the end is ourselves. Yes, it's very true. And you know what? I do have rituals. We had spoken about mm. this before, Christine. I have a little ritual that I do daily. Oh, tell about it. I it's got, so good. When I get in bed at, at night, I have a great big teddy bear in there with me, oh, by the way. Beautiful. But he isn't really part of that, although kind of, sort of. But I get in bed... And I put my arms around myself and I go, ooh, love you, Maxie, love you, love you, love you, love you, like that. And that's how I go to bed. Oh. And then in the morning when I get up, uh, I go and I, I live in a, a very nice place overlooking the public gardens. And I'm on the 17th floor. Lovely. I have this magnificent view. Yes. And I go over to the window, to the sliding glass doors, and I look out and I say, thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful. And you know, when you are having those feelings of gratitude, it's almost impossible to be miserable. That's true. Isn't it true? Do you yes. find that? Yes, I find it too because I've stopped watching news all day because it makes me miserable. I watch one hour news a day, yes, with my dear husband because it's our time together. I want to know what's going on locally. Yeah. That I may be able to influence somewhat. I have a confession. Mm, you watch CNN. I watch C. I love CNN. Yeah, of course. There's I so love much. Chris Cuomo. <laughs> and sometimes I'm staying. I'm pinching myself to stay awake to watch him at night. But he, he's like, I just love how he presents things. And he's a trooper. And he's valiant. And he wants to find out what's true and whatever. I yeah. enjoy and, that. And I hate to say it as a Canadian, but uh, U.S. news sometimes make me really laugh. 
Ja, wow, hey. Uh, uh, There's me a laugh certain a guy oh. at the top and he <laughs> you, you can either cry or laugh. An unmentionable? An unmentionable person. Yeah. yeah. We shouldn't be really political, but you can't help it. You I can't mean the help world's it. a mess. The and, world's and, and in my humble opinion, it's due to a particular he made Person. certainly a mess in U.S. politics. He, uh, I never, I think, a politician made such a mess in the world in that short a time. Yeah. So he yeah, certainly gets amazing. that married if well, he wants you know, to call it a marriage. I lived, I lived in the U.S. for 38 years. Yeah, you even my worked children, for Henry my Kissinger. My children were born there, and yeah, I did. I worked in Henry Kissinger's you office. You worked in the White House. Well, I uh, I visited the White House and I worked with Dr. C. Everett Koop, the uh -huh. former Surgeon General, who is my mentor and, and which my dear president friend. Did you interview? There was one, wasn't it? Reagan. Reagan, Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. The Do you know actor. What, you know what was amazing about him? He had the most beautiful blue eyes I'd ever seen. Except for I you. Was, oh, wow. <laughs> You're prejudiced. <laughs> yes, I am. But I was struck by the blue eyes. And it was like, wow. Or but, maybe oh, our puppy Rudy has beautiful oh, blue eyes. If you hear him bark, that's a puppy yeah, Rudy that's, not being that's happy. Rudy. That's Rudy. But I have to tell you something funny about when I was in the White House. Um, I thought, I wonder what it's like in the, in the washroom. In the, in the, there. So, a girl has to see the washrooms. <laughs> So I thought, if I ask, where is the washroom, they can't say no, right? Right. So they told me where it was when we were waiting to go into the Oval Office. And so I go into the, the washroom, I close the door, and it was nice. No big deal. <laughs> but I could say I was in the washroom in the White House just before going into the Oval Office. And then I made it into the Oval Office, right? And you left your impression in the washroom. <laughs> No, I didn't have to go, really. It was just a ruse to get me in there to see what it looked like. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we won't know. <laughs> did you meet anybody there? The first lady? No. They Reagan, have their own. Reagan, I did. And we but went. Not, in, not in the toilet. No, no, no. <laughs> nobody was in there. Just me. Just me. <laughs> that I wouldn't think. be a little. I, think. I wonder think? if they had a like a little peephole and they have a... They're watching everything. Cameras, right? They might I have. hope not. Well, it's I all mean, right. I didn't go. So, <laughs> even worse than you're under suspicion. <laughs> yeah, they might have think they might have thought I was planting something or whatever. So, but when you follow us with our Sunday sofa chats, you'll hear way more of Maxine's illustrious life and the less illustrious parts, and yes. maybe a few stories for me. Some are funny, some are not so funny. That's life, darling. That's life. It's life. Mm -hmm. yes, but in yes. the end, we all came out on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far, at some point, we transition. I don't call it we die and 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 yes. uh, in German we say we bite the grass. So they hear they hear they say bite the dust. Bite the dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so. all do. Mm -hmm. We all will die, and that's another topic we will talk about because talk nothing about is that. taboo, and yeah. so many people do not talk about death, mm -hmm. the meaning of life, yes, yes. Uh, and relationships. Another subject that's very near and dear to my heart is battered women. Yes. Um, you know, and addiction. And mental health. And it's mental health. Oh my God, all wrapped stigma. up into one. Stigma is huge, and that's what keeps us sick. And behind closed doors, so much goes on. And I always remember my mother saying to me, don't tell anybody outside. So to circle back to peace, would you say that you need personal peace in your life to be able to promote world peace? Yes, I, to genuinely and effectively do that. Mm. Yes, you have to feel it within yourself. If it's not there, it won't happen. It's like you, you can't give what you don't have. So the politicians that wage war are probably not very peaceful people in themselves. I don't think so. I know Hitler was. Well, he was well, a very unhappy person. Take Jimmy Carter as an example of a world leader. That man personifies peace. 94 yeah. years old, he's still, you know, he teaches Sunday school in his local church uh. every Sunday. And he allows time for people who go there to have, his, have their picture taken with him. I'm so impressed with him. He's a beautiful soul. 
Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, we need more of him. <laughs> and we need more of you. So if you have any ideas, just message, comment below the video. We are zip done hearing what you think. Ah, mwah, till next time. Love you all. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.